Well, my name is Phil Askew. I work for the London Legacy Development Corporation. I'm responsible for the green space, the public space in the park as we transform it from its games time to opening it to the public finally in spring next year. The, the park is really designed for people and for wildlife. Well, wildlife is a key component. Uh, before we started any work on the park at all, as part of the environmental assessment and the survey work, uh, we had teams of ecologists actually measuring, quantifying what was here, what quantities of habitat and indeed what species. And that was important for two reasons. Firstly, to think about what we might need to put back, but also we actually had to remove the species from the park, parkland. So we had newts, we had frogs, we had lots of wild cats, although they weren't part of the, part of the uh, biodiversity, if you like. And they all had to be taken away safely and relocated. We have a requirement to annually measure biodiversity within the parklands. So as our teams have built the park um, and, and as they maintain it, we have specialist ecologists and others coming in on an annual basis. So when people come into the park to measure biodiversity, one, one example we can think about are the meadows in the northern parklands. Um, we've installed the largest sown meadows in the world um, and they are specifically designed to create a range of habitats and biodiversity opportunities. So as monitoring of biodiversity is carried out, that will inform how some management practices might happen. And that's really important. If we cut the meadow at a certain time, uh, that will help to uh, increase biodiversity, for example, by allowing more light to the ground, different species to then to, to seed from the seed bank and to grow up and come through. Measuring biodiversity will be done in a number of different ways. So if it's bird species, it's obviously observing bird species, whether they're populating some of the specific things we built for them, like kingfisher walls or sand martin banks, etc. In terms of meadows, it'll be using transects and those, if you like, traditional forms of, of, of measuring numbers of species in a given area and using that as, as a key to understanding what's happening to it, how it's developing. Accurate record keeping of biodiversity is important for a number of reasons. Um, firstly, we've built a new park. How is it changing? How is it responding? It has some very specific approaches to biodiversity which are quite unique and we want to understand in this urban area, in this city, what it's doing, how is it developing. I mean, in my mind, one great success will be we have two otter halts in the park which have been specifically designed for otters to live in, obviously. They live five miles up the River Lee, we believe. I would be delighted to find an otter living one of those. That would be an immediate sign of success. Uh, what do I like about my job? Well, I suppose, uh, firstly, my background is in horticulture, in urban design and landscape architecture. And the park that we've created covers all of those things. It's all about great design uh, and thinking about how people could use it. Uh, it's obviously about horticulture and growing plants successfully uh, in, in a challenging environment. Uh, and, and it's about thinking about the wider urban context and how people are going to use the park and how it meshes into its historic surroundings, if you like. So again, behind me is the River Lee. North of, in the northern parklands, we have an area we call the Wetland Bowl, which is our most extensive wetland planted area. It's beautiful to look at. People actually feel calm when they go there. It's also fantastic for biodiversity, for nesting birds, etc. But also what it does is when we have a big flood event, is it's designed to flood. And in flooding, it protects over 4,000 properties upriver, which wouldn't have been protected before. So, of course, many people have worked on this project, all the way from the inception through to games and now in transformation. All sorts of different skill sets. Uh, everything uh, from extraordinary project managers, uh, extraordinary project managers, uh, to, to great contractors. On a project of this scale, and, and indeed speed, communication is fundamental. If you don't have good communication, then nothing works, frankly. So we have a huge range of different tools. But actually, the best communication is sitting down and talking to people. One of the things which I've noticed through the whole project, the six odd years I've been involved with it, is the sheer professionalism of people. Uh, the ability to work really calmly in often very challenging situations. Thousands and thousands of people will come here. I think it will be an incredibly busy place, a huge diverse range of things to do uh, for people 
from bird watching to international sport.